Daphne here from Gravity Art Lab with another acrylic painting video. Today we are going to be painting a peacock feather. Now we're starting with a 16 by 20 canvas that has a base coat of black paint with a little bit of blue streak through it. For a full list of all the materials and colors that we used on this project, go to gravityartlab.com and you'll find a link to this video and a full list of everything that you need to go with it. On my palette right now I have four colors. I've got yellow, magenta, and blue, and I also have a little bit of white on there. What you see me applying to the canvas right now is the color that I want for my main background color. It's mostly blue mixed with a little bit of white and I have a tiny bit of the primary magenta mixed in there. I'm applying it in vertical stripes and I'm trying to get that streaky background effect that I like. If you're not crazy about this color for the background or the overall color scheme of the painting, this is a really easy one to mix up. We did a monochrome version of this that turned out beautifully and I'll show you some examples of that at the end of this video. And we used only black and white for 90% of this painting. We added just a little bit of color right at the end and it was just a really beautiful effect. So in this case, instead of adding the blue, you would be adding more of the gray tones, just a mixture of white and black to get some variations in that background uh, tone without getting the extra color in there. You get the idea on creating the background now. You're just going to keep adding paint until you're happy with the way that looks and then we're going to let it dry and get to the peacock feather. I'm going to speed up this video just a little bit. As a final effect, I'm now adding a little bit of black back into my painting. I'm focusing primarily on the corners and the edges, just so that it draws the viewer's eye more toward the center. My canvas has completely dried and now I'm using a piece of regular chalk to sketch on my design. You don't have to get too detailed with your sketch. You really just want to make sure that you're placing all the major elements where you want them on your painting so that when you go on and you start to apply the paint, uh, you're not going to have to go back and fix it at all. So make sure you're happy with the, the layout of the main spine of your feather and then go ahead and add the little wispy parts in. Notice I'm going a lot smaller on the bottom and my uh, feather gets really wide in the center and then it tapers back down to the round area at the top. Now that I have the basic layout of the feather on my canvas, I'm playing a little bit with the direction of those little tiny feathers called barbs. And I wasn't happy with the direction that I had them in, so I just sketched in some new lines. And you notice that I erased my old lines with just a dry paper towel. This isn't critical, there's still a little bit of chalk left in there. And at the very end is my final, final step after my piece is completely painted and dries, I'm going to go back with a damp paper towel and I can get any of the stray chalk that's left behind. So that's not a big deal. And when I'm applying my acrylic, 
I'm gonna go right on top of this chalk and that's not a big deal either. So uh, just get to a point where you're comfortable with your drawing without applying too much chalk on there and uh, you'll be good. Now I've switched to my smaller half inch flat brush and I'm applying mostly black. There's a little bit of blue mixed in. Uh, to create my lines on my drawing, I'm doing the main spine shape there and then I'm gonna start to add those little barb feathers. Now I'm slowing this down because the important thing here in order to get a skinny line that has clean edges is in the way that you're holding the paintbrush when you're applying this paint. Notice how I'm rotating that the head of the brush as I'm applying the stroke. What I'm doing here is I'm making sure that the brush is pointing in the direction that my line is going. So if you can see what I'm doing with my uh, thumb and my forefinger, as I'm applying that paint, I'm rotating that head so that it's going in the proper direction. If I was applying the paint using the flat side of my brush, I would be getting a much thicker line and I'd also be getting rough edges on my line. So this is sort of a technique that you need to practice. Some people are more comfortable using round head brushes for this uh, because they're not comfortable doing this, but I would highly recommend that you practice this technique because it makes uh, it a lot easier to get that control that you want when you're applying the paint. So once I have my black lines in there, you'll notice I'm going to start picking up a little bit more blue and I'm going to start varying the color so that I have some more interest in my peacock feather as I go. I'm going to speed this up and um, let you see how the whole thing comes together. So here I am mixing up some green. I'm just combining the blue and the yellow to get a color that I'm happy with. It looks like there might be a little bit of white mixed in there and maybe a tiny bit of black too. Uh, play with that until you get a color you're happy with. Again, I'm rotating the head of the brush so I get a nice clean line there. And then I'm going back and I'm actually feathering out the edges of this. I'm trying to soften it up so that I don't have a hard edge on this. I want it to look like the eye of an actual peacock feather. So I'm trying to get those little wispy lines in there to indicate those uh, barbs kind of radiating outward. So I think I've gone most of this painting without actually washing out my brush. And I'm switching over to more of an orange shade here. I'm incorporating the the magenta and the yellow together and because I know that if I'm if I mix the green in with that I'm gonna get more of a muddy tone and I want to try to keep this a little bit crisper I uh, washed out my brush and now I'm going to mix that orange tone that I'm using Similar to the process I used for the green ring, I apply the general shape that I want and now I'm going back in and I'm feathering out those little edges to get a little bit of a softer effect.
I'm rinsing and cleaning my brush off a little off camera here and then I'm going to go ahead and add that center part of the eye that's more in the blue tones.
Okay, now I'm getting ready to pull out my little rigger or liner brush. And this is a brush that I use to get the finest details, especially when I'm doing really uh, long, skinny lines. It's great because it holds quite a bit of paint considering how skinny the bristles are. And um, the important thing here is to mix up your paint in almost an ink-like consistency. You want it to be nice and thin so that it goes on thin. And I'm using black, so I'm not as concerned about the opacity of it. If I were to be adding a color like yellow or even red, uh, those colors tend to be very transparent. And so if I add a lot of water to it, they're not gonna show up really well, but with black and white, uh, they're very opaque colors. And so I can water them down fairly well and still get a nice effect when I'm applying them to, on top of other colors. So here you see me adding, again, with that same skinny brush, I'm adding the details inside the center of the eye of that feather. I'm using it to create some little line work in there and to um, add some texture. Here I am adding a few final touches and it's pretty much done. Here's a version of the painting that I referred to as the monochrome. Actually I incorporated two colors into this in addition to the black and white and uh, it was painted in the exact same fashion. I did just grays in the background instead of adding the blues in there and then I painted on the peacock feather using again just shades of black and white and gray and as a final step I added the purple and the blue to my painting to both the eye and just a few little strands in there just to tie it all together. I hope you enjoyed this video and that it inspires you to get your paints out and get creative.